words mean. You have bought yourself a guitar, but it plays like poop. <laughs> well, thank you, Esteban Bon. We you appreciate that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary Weinroth. Welcome to Making Music. We're from uh, Guitar Showcase here today to uh, to talk about the guitar that possibly you or someone you know got for Christmas or for birthday or maybe found it under the bed or wherever. And our message to you is we don't care where you bought it. We don't care what brand it is. In fact, that was the famous Mark Blazquez from Fender Musical <laughs> Instruments playing the uh, Esteban Bon guitar, which is, is something that we found in our swap shop uh, that is truly a questionable Instrument. Typical of an instrument you might find at a less reputable store than your own, sir. Possibly so. Now that that particular guitar, can we can we get the action? Can you kind of show it to, to the camera over there so he can kind of look at the action on that guitar? Yeah, you want to see that you could uh, you could probably okay, push fly down a, on those strings, Mark, and let's probably let's, fly a small plane underneath these strings. Yeah, that's that's and what could, you don't want. And double as a uh, as a crossbow if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> now, in in all fairness. That guitar was made probably back in the, the 50s or 60s, before we had computers that care. Okay. And, and so it, it was an extremely poor example. Once again, that's a wall hanger. That's not an instrument, and we would not want anybody to try and play it. So let me welcome our guest. First of all, Esteban Bon is Mark Blazquez, Fender Musical Instruments. How are you? And all-around nice guy. I forgot that part. I keep part. telling you that. Okay. And then next we have Terry Allen from Guitar Showcase. He's uh, electric guitar department manager as well as uh, one of our chief setup guys, Luthier, and uh, also all-around nice guy. And then I have the fabulous Jack Van Breen with his musician looking for groupie shirt on. Uh, <laughs> this really, honey, it's, right, right it's not here. what it this seems. This is good. I love that patch. <laughs> and, uh, and it's true. He is. He's look, see that musician looking for groupies. Yeah. that's. And he is uh, with Guitar Showcase also. Even though Jack is in our IT department, he helps as a part-time sales manager and on the floor. And he's a gigging musician, as are all of you, Absolutely. which is which is very good. All, all three of you uh, know what you're doing that way. So, uh, once again, our message, we don't care where you bought it. doesn't make any difference. Could it come from Walmart, Kmart, Bed Bath & Beyond? It doesn't matter. Those guitars, with a little care and feeding, we can, we can make right for you. We can, we can fix them so that they can play. Now, one of the things, Terry, you have to set up guitars at Guitar Showcase. Not only do you sell them, you help me with the ordering. You tell me what's cool because I'm an old guy and I don't know these things. And, of course, Mark does that too. But tell us about what you have to do to make a guitar playable. Now, that was an extremely poor example. Okay, That's that, an extremely poor example. All right. So, hey, wait so a minute. Th let's, let's go with a, a reasonably you know, entry-level guitar, this Jackson here. Who happens to be made by, by Fender, Fender Musical Absolutely. Instrument? They own Jackson, which is a is a famous brand name. I see we have a broken string here. Now we certainly do. Now this is this has got a Floyd Rose tremolo. Tell me about this. This looks like a nightmare to change that string. In fact, I generally don't do that. Tell us, tell us what we have to do to to make that happen. First, well, uh, we call Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> first, yeah, the first thing you do is you call Jeremy. He works at our store. He's an expert at setting these up. But they're setting them up and then they're maintaining them. What we're talking about here today is kind of what you have to do to maintain it. Classic example when you break a string. Uh, if you change strings on these, you change them one at a time. Otherwise, you have to mess with this for a long time and you don't want to do that. So basically, the guitar comes with the tools that you need, your little wrenches. It's got a locking screw here at the bridge and one at the nut. So you just have to grab the right wrench, which is always the second one. <laughs> now tell us why, while you're doing this, lock. why do they lock them? Why, why, do we, why do we go to all this trouble? The reason for this, that when we tune it up and plug it in, it'll become a little more obvious, is that what the Floyd does is it locks the string in place on both ends. So the first thing you have to do is 
cut the little brass end off. Well, they don't which, use that. Which normally on most guitars is what holds the string in place at the bridge. Some call that neutering. Uh, yes. Okay, that's, this goes <laughs> along with our Esteban Bon theme. Yes. And then the string actually just goes into a little slot. Glad you can see that. Yeah. Barely. That kind of goes in. And then there's a little block in there, and you tighten it down. That clamps it? That clamps it. When okay. it stops, you give it a bob, maybe just a little bit of pressure. You don't need to over-tighten them. All right, well, now what happens if I do over-tighten it? Will it break the string? You'll be coming in the guitar showcase. We actually do sell the inserts and the screws. Because I'll strip because that? Because they will strip yeah. out. If you okay. tighten them right, they'll last a very long time. Okay. I'm sure Eddie Van Halen is very good at changing these parts. Well, his roadies are, anyway. Yeah, his roadies are. Yeah, and if we haven't gotten too far ahead of ourselves yet, I wanted to just point out that, um, that the tremolo system that, uh, that Terry's setting up now is called a Floyd Rose system uh, because that's the name of the guy who came up with it. And it was invented, oh, I don't know, 25 years ago or so as an attempt to keep guitars with tremolos in tune, which has always been a challenge. But what he's going through right now would be typical of how you would restring a guitar like this, but not how you would restring most. Yeah, you wouldn't do that or say... This one is a little bit simpler. Yeah. And this is actually the tremolo system for which Floyd invented that system to fix. Yep. Uh, because these do have a tendency when you do severe wobbling of it... Dive bomb. Dive bombs, the guitar will go slightly out of tune. Sure. Or totally out of tune. Or totally out of tune, depending on how well it was set up initially. Absolutely. But it was never meant to be played that way. It was not. No, no it was meant to be played. In all fairness, played. right. It's sure. It was a little, yeah, a little of that. But, uh, you know, musicians will always take things uh, as far as they can go and then a little farther. And, uh, the, and the double locking system that, that Terry's working with now, it's, it's truly amazing. I have one on one of my Fender Stratocasters, and uh, I frequently will get to a gig and get halfway through the first or second song and realize I never bothered to tune, and I just don't have to. It's, it's an amazingly stable system and, uh, and very common on Jackson guitars. So they licensed this from Floyd Rose, Fender did? Yeah. Okay. And you can find this system on other guitars, I'm sure. Similar, yeah. I'm Similar. not actually sure on, on exactly what is... I mean, Floyd was the guy who came up with the first double-locking system. Right. Um, you can make modifications to it, as, as I know um, other companies have, and, and get around... I think Kaler's another one that did something similar. Yes. They had a locking trim of some sort. They, they had totally locking, different. Yeah. It's, you're going to get into personal preference of, of what, was, what was good and what was bad, but... Uh, but another thing, so the reason what Terry was pointing out about um, tuning one string at a time, in, in a, on a tremolo guitar, like most Stratocasters, uh, the bridge is normally is sort of floating. Maybe I can, can we get a shot of this guitar here? Yeah, oh, the right floating. bridge. Up in here. And yeah, you right can see in this area. right in this area how the bridge can go back and forth. It actually is not resting on a body. That's called right. floating. And allows you to do some neat stuff, but if you break a string, you put the guitar down and pick up another one because you're right. totally out of tune. Yeah, because what happens is the bridge is actually sitting with a balance of tension between the strings and the springs that are in the back on the tremolos.